I'm a professor in media and communication and I have double affiliations. I'm serving as associate professor at the Department of Communication and Media at Lund University, but also as a professor in media at the School of Health and Welfare at Hampstead University. And I would position my research within two broader areas of research. I do research on media and health and on children and digital media. And uh, the first, it means that I'm interested in the role media pe play for people's health development. Um, I'm interested in the uh, media and public health discourses and the consequences thereof of people on people's everyday life and health practices. And uh, over the years, I have um, investigated various kinds of mediated health content from news coverage of health um, issues, uh, obesity, advertising, food blocks, etc. And um, lately, I've also looked into issues related to digital health, uh, for example, apps for well-being and e-health solutions. And um, my, my, uh, my second research interest, it concerns children, youth and digital media. And for almost 10 years, I did research on internet. And this strand of research, it was pursued within a research group called KILU, and that stands for Children Advertising and Internet. And we were three seniors and two PhD students and an assistant uh, as well, performing more than 10 uh, sub-studies. Um, some in col collaboration with Lund, University's, uh, Lund University Humanities Lab, uh, where we actually are today making this video. Um, this research, it was, it was cross-disciplinary and it was based on multi-methodology. And we, we combined traditional methods from the social scientists and the humanities. Uh, for example, text analysis, discourse analysis and interviewing. And we combine that with studies based on experimental design and controlled experiments uh, involving eye tracking and also the measurement of eye movements while kids were interacted with the screen. And the aim was to better understand Internet as a new commercial arena, looking into new ways of marketing, online and uh, also online advertising and uh, we asked questions about children in the age between nine and well 16 about their potential actual but also their perceived exposure to commercial content this was uh, a, f a fantastic project and it inspires me a lot to actually continue doing research with younger audiences and digital media and this is also where the ideas um, came from and inspired me to, you know, build on and, and start this Diggy Kids project. Well, uh, you could say in a way that I, I kind of carry on the legacy from, um, from earlier colleagues working on children in media and everyday life. And actually our first professor in media and communication studies here in Lund, Kalle Krusinger, and he became widely recognized for running this wonderful research program called the Media Panel Program in the 80s and the 90s. And it was a combination of longitudinal studies, media studies, which is quite rare now nowadays and a combination with cohort studies of children and their media uses and uh, also their school performances, their values, attitudes and what they did in their spare time. However, now, uh, today, there are kind of few researchers in Sweden uh, doing research on children and media. Um, but I've also been lucky to be part of a huge European research initiative, which is called the Cost Action, uh, the Multimodal and Digital Practices of Young Children. And it was later abbreviated Digilite, the Digital Literacy and Multimodal Practices of Young Children. And um, this initiative, it was for, um, it was for capacity building networking and research and it was initiated by Professor Jackie Marsh from University of Sheffield in the UK. Well, DigiKids Sweden, it's a unique project. It's a four-year project. It's funded by the Swedish Research Council and it's a collaborative venture between three universities actually. Um, I'm the project leader and I have in my team two senior researchers and collaborative partners. It's Ulrika Sjöberg who is associate professor at Malmö University and Ebba Sundin who is also associate professor um, at Hampstead University. And um, the DigiKids project is inspired 
by the work the three of us started within the European Digilite project. Um, what else about DigiKids? Well, it's focused upon the youngest citizens, the toddlers or the zero to threes, and uh, their domestication and appropriation of digital technology in a family and household setting. Um, today, very young children, they grow up in media dense and media rich homes. However, it does not necessarily mean that the kids have access to the technology or that they develop digital skills. Um, some get access for sure and they learn quickly how to make use of it and how to, you know, handle the gadget. Uh, but frankly, we know very little about their agency, their actual media practices and skills, the routines and rituals, the, the parental mediation and the role the parents have in introducing technology to the little ones. Um, also, we know little about the meaning making and the moral economy around digital media and young children in the family context. Well, children's media use, it starts in the domestic sphere. Their appropriation of digital technology, media practices and skills, it can only be understood if it is contextualized within the social and cultural setting of the home and the family. And DigiKids, it relies on an ethnographic approach, uh, which enables us to map out with rich empirical detail how digital media technology are used and interpreted. Um, by children in a specific yet natural local setting, the home, the household. And within this uh, ethnographic approach, we combine different perspectives and different methods in order to find various ways to investigate and understand young children's digital life in a family context. The methodology applied is called a day in the life and it has been used to study the development and learning in early childhood. It's also described as a form of ecological investigation of culture and the construction of early childhood developed by Dr. Julia Gillen at Lancaster University. Uh, she's from the UK and we're also a colleague from the Cost Action Network and she is a great source of inspiration and also a distant critical friend in this venture. Oh, there is always a lot of challenges and also risks involved in doing research. One is actually to, to get people to volunteer, to participate. And um, actually few people are willing to let strangers into the house and to spend time with their, you know, babies and dear ones, let alone video film the private sphere and their home and the interaction, the daily routine, what's going on in the house. Um, so we need to invest a lot to build trust with our subjects and participants and set aside time to talk with them and in detail explain how the research is carried out and um, what it means participating and what we actually want to do while visiting them. And um, it's so important that they feel comfortable and at ease when we are there, that they can trust us. And uh, we also test video uh, the child um, and do a test video shooting to introduce the technology, the camera and the tripod to the child to get a little bit acquainted with the technology before we go there for the full day of filming. Um, it's also quite difficult to do this kind of ethnographic research. Um, being a stranger, uh, yet an invited guest and acting, you know, as a, as a fly on the wall, uh, as an observer, because there is so much to take in the atmosphere, the body languages, the mimic of the child, sounds and smell, furniture, the activities, what is actually going on uh, there. And um, so there's a lot to, to take in and register. And that's, that's also why we always go as a team. We're always two researchers during the family visits. Um, one is usually focused on the child and the technology and the recording, while the other is more in the, in the background, uh, keeping an eye on, uh, on things and observing and making the field notes. I must say, it's also very special um, to do research with young children. And uh, having experience from children is an advantage. I'm almost necessary, I would say, because 
there is a lot of ethical issues and impl ethical implications related to doing research on minors and particularly these very young children who, who hardly can speak for themselves and hardly has access to language or a voice so you need to be very sensitive to their needs and wants and um, we are to to follow them and be there but not really interact with them we need to relate to them but we shouldn't interfere or try to influence the situation or action so we need to be very cautious and careful and uh, not to cause any distress or harm not making the child upset or disturbed um, so you need to be this sensitive all the time, uh, sensitive all the time and also pay attention to, OK, when is the time to stop the camera and uh, when does the family need to have a break? Um, how can we keep the child happy and at ease, uh, being a distant, passive friend? And this balance between closeness, which is natural for kids, they want to be close to you, they want to interact and touch and so on. And while at the same time being distant and neutral, that is really difficult uh, to handle in a way and a challenge but also a wonderful thing um, another thing is that you never really know what will happen when you're out there because all of a sudden you know a parent is handing over you the infant uh, because they need to attend to older siblings so there is something else going on in the household or you need to help out uh, dressing the child or you need to give an extra hand catch a toy comes flying in the air or something so it's always an adventure being on the field and doing this kind of field work in the private homes you really never know what will happen but it's also it's it's really great it's great fun and uh, it's wonderful to get glimpses into the lives uh, of all these families and the little ones it's a true joy i must say i i mean it's it's not everyone who can get the chance to to have this research experience and learn from these young children the way we do so i feel really lucky